tonight it is a privilege for me to yield the stage of the Barbara Stanwyck Theater to one of America's best loved stars, my old friend Andy Devine. The story is called Big Jake, written by John and Ward Hawkins. It is one of a series that has been enjoyed by millions of readers in the Saturday Evening Post. Many of you know Andy Devine on television as Uncle Andy or as Wild Bill Hickok's pal Jingles. Now he lays aside his buckskins for the plain clothes of Big Jake Sloan, Detective Sergeant. A tough, able, dedicated policeman with two major problems, his waistline and his heart, both of which are so big that they get him into more trouble than the criminals he brings to justice. In one minute, Andy Devine as Big Jake Sloan. <laughs> Willie Teeter's work, screwdriver job. Well, he's rooting again. Did I hear you right? You know who robbed my safe? Willie Teeter, which he leaves his trademark all over the place, but knowing is one thing and proven is something else. Did you check the neighborhood? Yeah, warehouses, a couple of small factories, one house across the street back of the key shop. Man works nights, the woman says she was asleep, didn't hear anything, didn't see anything. Use your phone? Sure. Weather Bureau, this is Detective Sergeant Sloan. What time did it stop raining last night? Mm-hmm. Thanks. Hey, is that Big Jake Sloan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jake. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. I was asleep. Rain last night till 5 a.m. There's a dry spot in your driveway. Looks like a car was parked there until, oh, maybe 6 o'clock. So you had company. You want to tell me who? You gotta talk so loud. I, I kind of forgot. A friend came by for coffee. Petey Bing, you know. Yeah, I know. Rhymes a cat. Lights coffee. Hey, nobody in Hey, Big Jake. I hear that you had uh, coffee with a lady which she lives just across the street from the uh, Apex garage. Now, somebody peeled the Apex safe. Now, that ain't a very quiet way to operate, Petey, and I was thinking that... Uh, Maybe you might have looked out the window and uh, seen somebody. Not me. What lady? I wasn't even there. Well, thanks anyway. Hey, Big Jake, you dropped. That's him. Well, if I gotta testify, I gotta. But this is gonna be the end of Mamie and me. Well, you can always come here for your, uh, coffee. <laughs> What's the matter, Willie? Too much night work? You got to sleep days? How much do you get out of that Apex safe? Oh, same old story, huh? Somebody makes a score, right away you come looking for me. I never heard of no Apex. I'm clean. You don't believe me? Search the joint. You mean like for tools? This time I don't need any tools, Willie. I've got an eyewitness. Now get your pants on. Yeah. Now get out of there. All right, all right, all right. Don't... 
This time I'm going to file you away where you'll be easy to find. Nice fast work on the Apex Garage job, Jay. Thanks. That was yesterday's headache. I come in to talk about tomorrow. Heavy hits town about a month ago by the name of Larry Duncan. He'll go any route. Here lately, he's been hitting safes. He's a louse, a thief from away back, and pretty handy with a gun. He's been in and out of the Meadowbrook supermarket 10 or 11 times in the past five days. Could be legitimate. And legitimate is one thing that Duncan ain't. He even went so far as to ask for a job so he could look at the office and the safe. He's ready. Weekend holiday coming up. Stores open Saturday, Sunday, close Monday. Well, the way I got it figured, he'll hit Sunday night. Two days taking the safe and a 24-hour start. All he needs is a partner, a good safe mechanic. Well, Duncan's a pretty tough boy. Might be some shooting. Yeah. Well, you're second in command. You run the place when I'm not here. No need to ask. Just be careful. Well, ain't I always? No. The press Democrat wants to know what you and the lieutenant are cooking up behind closed doors. It's all very hush-hush, but the police are organizing a marching and chatter club, which is none of your business. Jake. Well, hi, Sam. Glad to see you. Come on in. Sam, you know that table you made for me? I'll bet I could have sold that a dozen times for 50 bucks or more. He's a great cabinet maker. I came down here to turn myself in, Jake. You can send me back to the walls. For what? I robbed your safe. No, 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 Sam. Now, we got to talk this over. Come on, beat it. Go get lost. Go play with a loaded pistol. This is a story, Jake. I'm in. Oh, let him stay. It's got to hit the newspaper sometime. Why, Sam? Why? You were clean. Your bill was paid and you had a lot to spare. Sam, you can't do this to me. I helped you get your parole. But I did it, Jake. The Apex Garage. I opened that box. But I've got him. Willie Teeter, he's upstairs waiting for the grand jury. I read in the newspapers where you got him. But it was my job, Jake. I don't want him taking a fall for me. Sam, I got an eyewitness. He's wrong. I'll sign a statement. I'll, I'll tell you where I hid the tools. But why, Sam? You must have known there wasn't more than 400 bucks in that safe. I got tired of sitting around. Stop worrying about me, will you, Jake? When did I ever worry about any man I put behind the walls? All right, you want in, you're in. Give me Mickey. Sam Lundborg's on his way up to turn himself in. Yes, Sam Lundborg. Well, he got this far by himself. You want I should hold his hand? Huh? He says he's a thief. Treat him like a thief. Red deuce and pills. I eat them like popcorn and I gain two pounds. Why so rough, Jake? I've got a right to be. Do you realize what's going to happen to him? For a lousy 400 bucks, I'll throw him away for the rest of his life. 10, maybe 15 years. And I'll give you odds he can't live him out behind those walls. That's a bet I won't take. Why? Why would an old pro go for such a cheap score? Why would he come in here to me and cop out? I got to look into this one. Hey, wait a minute. Not without me. Oh, a couple of porters fresh out of college. Well, this is where Sam's kid lives. Well, it's nice and comfortable. Yeah. Hi, 
Hi, honey. Yes, what is it? It's about Sam Lundborg. There's no one here by that name. You must be mistaken. Police? Please, come in. This is my husband, Fred. Mr... Jake Sloan. This is George Corbin. They're policemen, Fred. They're looking for my father. What do you want with Sam? Old man blew a safe day before yesterday and took 400 bucks. We've got him locked up. Why would he do it? I'd like to know. This could cost him all he's got left. And he's asking for it. You two got any ideas? We did everything we could for him. I like the old man. Ex-convict or not. He had a home here for the rest of his life with us. I told him that. I met it. We gave him a room of his own. A place where he could be alone. Clothing, pocket money, food. We even let him have the car on Wednesday night so he could go to the movies. Well, what else could we do for him? We tried to include him in everything, but our friends did ask questions. And he didn't want people to know where he'd been. That figures. I'll be down to see Sam. I want to help. Well, they seem like real nice people. You know, I'd say they did everything they could for Sam. Yeah, you would say that. Say, that's a pretty doll. And my, what a pretty chair. I'll bet your grandfather made that for you. I don't have a grandfather. Mr. Johnson made my chair. Mr. Johnson lives with this. Yeah, Mr. Johnson. Did you hear that? Well, they gave him a home and, and, and spending money and they let him use the car. And the rest of the time they hide him. Yeah, but understand, he's an ex-convict, isn't he? What do you expect them to do, wave him around like a flag? Why, living like that could be worse than being in prison. But it's not their fault he used to blow safes. You gonna get in or you gonna walk back to the station? Underneath the bush in a vacant lot on 48, right where Sam said they were. Get him down here. Sam Lundborg, safe, right away. Safe, good night speaking. Back at the motel, huh? Let us know if he moves out. Right. I heard. Who's back at the motel? Why are you so interested? Closed door conferences going on all over the place. Look, you've got something big happening. You can't tell me you haven't. Keep this up and I'll forget how to spell your name. Come on, Gib. Who came back? What is all this stuff? Proof. Sam left the sack of tools. Screwdriver's got a broken point, just like the one that made the marks on the apex job. I see you found them. Yeah, we found them. Now for the record. Are those your tools or ain't they? They're mine. I hid them in a bush in a vacant lot. Now you can quit pushing, old man. You've made it. Take him upstairs. For the rest of his life. More to spare. And the whole mess don't make any sense. How many falls have you had, Willie? Couple. Uh, three. Folsom, Jew, Idaho, Arizona, Michigan. You don't count something, Willie. How much you get out of that Apex garage? I told you, I never seen any Apex garage. We got a cab driver, so you come out of the place. He picked you out of the lineup. The guy's got eyes that bad, shouldn't be driving a cab. All right. All right. 
work, will we? You know, there's one thing I don't understand. Hot shot like you, big man, big friends. How come you're still with us? How come one of your big friends doesn't spring for your bail? Huh? Maybe I like it here. Sure, sure you do. All right, Willie, you're on your feet. Check the contents and sign the slip. What's this? What is it? I'm throwing you back on the street. <laughs> it's about time. I kept telling you you got the wrong guy. <laughs> I'm telling you to wipe that smile off your face before you wear it on the back of your neck. Now get out of here because I'm sick of looking at you. Taylor. I was just sprung. I ought to beat your brains out. Fooling around with a garage box and we got a big one set up and ready to go. You penny ante jerk. Larry, I was broke. I had... Yeah, you'll be broke. Back arms and legs if you ever cross me like that again. Get in there and shave. You look like a two-bit bum. Sure, Larry. I, sure, I'll... Both suspects now in the same motel. Notify safe detail. Jake, you all right if I come in? When do you start asking, can I come in? Well, I got a couple of friends with me. We tried to reach you by phone. Uh, when Jared said you'd be here tonight, we tagged along. Send Sam Lombard down at the safe office. Now. We want to help. You got any ideas? Sam's the one to hear him. What's up? Willie Peter came out of his motel room long enough to sign the register. Joe Smith, that's an original name. 1220. Metal Lock Market closes at 11. If they're going to move, they better be getting at it. Everybody in position? Ready and waiting. You got something to tell him? Tell him. Here's some money we've saved. $670. We want to reimburse the garage owner for the money he lost and the damages to the safe. Hey, it's good night speaking. He's willing to drop the charges. Right. We'll take him home and try again. I told you, I robbed the safe. They're on their way. Let's roll. You want to stay here and talk or go back upstairs? I want to go upstairs. Take him upstairs. Well, don't look at me like it's my fault. Man pleads guilty to a felony, you can't buy him out. There ain't that much money. Chuck, I'm sorry. Jay, wait a minute. Drop it, or you got a hand to let go with. I pick myself a partner. All right, Willie, on your feet. And this time I've got a witness you can't beat. Me. Now get out. <laughs> well, you still here? Must be you can't sleep. Rudy, bring Sam Lomborg down here. We stayed to give you this. Put it away and listen. It might be, you'll be surprised. Step in the office. Don't you sit down.
We got you on the supermarket job. Now, do you want to clean up the other stuff, or do you want it waiting for you when you get out? Like what other stuff? Like the Apex Garage. You left your trademark all over it. Oh, no, I didn't. Now, you ain't going to pin that. Ah, don't cost you nothing to cop out now, hotshot. Four hundred and twelve bucks in bills and three rolls of pennies. That checks. Take them up and get it in writing. How many times you gotta haul me down here? I told you I opened the box. Sam, I just got a confession. Willie Teeter copped out. Dad, you didn't do it. Now, why in the world did you say that you did? How could it happen? How? How is easy. That supermarket safe was too big a job for Larry Duncan to handle alone. He needed Willie Teeter, but Willie was in the bucket. So he contacted Sam. How about it, Sam? So what if he did? You weren't about to open that safe. But you did tell Duncan that you'd admit to the Apex job and spring Willie back on the street. Why, Dad? Why? Because he wants to go back to prison. Wants to go back? Well, Sam? It's true. I do want to go back. I want to be myself again. They let me alone there. They let me do what I want to do with the tools in the wood. I... I ain't good for much, but I am a cabinet maker. And behind the walls, they respect that. But, Dad, we did everything for you. We gave you a home, a room of your own, clothes, money, the car. You gave me a name, too. Dad, I had to. I had to protect Fred, his boss and his friends. What he's talking about is the name you didn't give him. What he wants is... That little girl, they call him Grandpa. Oh, Dad. I'm so ashamed. I know you are, but I can't change what I was. Oh, no, no, Dad, you don't understand. I'm ashamed of myself. So narrow and small. Oh, Daddy, please. Give me another chance. Say, now this... That the Springer Spaniel kid's got a pretty good idea. Now listen to him. Well, the idea is something I talked to Jake about already. I have the address of a man who owns a small building. And he's got shop space and an adjoining apartment. And he'll rent it cheap. And Sam could live there by himself and have a business of his own there. So you wouldn't have to carry Sam. You could invest some dough in him and he'd carry himself. Now, how about it? Of course. Well, now, this is a safe detail office, which is meant for cops and, 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 and thieves and Springer Spaniel reporters. Now, why don't all of you honest people go home? Please, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go home and comb your hair? Sure, sure, yes. Oh, no, no, no. A $5 bonus is very nice. But I was just wondering if, if, if maybe you could make it, say, 10? Oh, no, oh, yes. That's like the story, Jake. I guess I owe you something. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll spring for breakfast. Uh, eggs, ham, potatoes. Hot cakes, honey. All I get is black coffee and dry toast. Now, not only do you sit in my chair, you use my telephone, you put your feet on my desk, but you have aroused my appetite to the point that it will spoil my whole day. Now you've been up all night. Now go home and play in the traffic. <laughs> Potatoes, hot cakes, honey. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>